Hello and welcome. So in this video, I'll be doing all the diary tasks at once, the easy, medium, hard, and elite. Since this is a guide on doing all the diary tasks at once, these are the skills you will be needing. Now, my guide is going to focus mostly on the pathing, so I'm not going to really go through each skill requirement that's needed. But you'll probably need to know the favor requirements and the quest requirements. Since this is in the Zaya area, you're going to see quite a few house favor requirements, but the quest requirements are going to be actually kind of low or easy, except for probably Dream Mentor. Now for the easy set, you only need 15% Hosidia's favor and started the Queen of Thieves. On the medium set, you need to do Fairy Tale 2 up to the part till you actually could use the Fairy Rings. And then these five quests are each of the house quests that will unlock a teleport in your memoirs, which is a task where you have to teleport to each location at least once. Then you have Eagle's Peak quest and more house favor requirements. For the hard set, you're going to need 100% favor in all houses because that's required to complete Architectural Alliance, which Architectural Alliance is required if you want to teleport to Xerox's heart with the Xerox Talisman, which is the task itself. Then you have the only hard quest, which is Dream Mentor, which is required if you want to monster examine a mountain troll. And then for the elite set, there aren't really any additional quest or favor requirements because in the hard set, you're required to have 100% in all houses. So you can't even claim elite if you haven't completed hard. Of course, there's going to be higher skill requirements, but for quest and favor requirements, it's the same as the previous set. So in this tab, this is all the items you'll be needing. I'll quickly go through each item in case you don't know what they look like, but your shopping list will be in the description. So you have coins, skill neck, celestial sapling, potato cactus, fly fishing rod, the feathers, uh, honestly any axe of any kind. The Ava and my blowpipe are my combat equipment to kill lizard shamans, so just swap that out for whatever you plan to use. Anti-poison of some sort. Uh, King Ward's actually not necessary. Uh, memoirs, box trap, spade, hammer, Nails of any tier, higher the better. Plank, lockpick, uh, fishing rod, sandworms, cooking gauntlets, Zarek talisman, light source of any kind. Optionally, you could bring the teleport to house. Face mask, room pick, eddy ore, coal, thrombin potion, limp root, chisel, cosmic rune, astral rune, mind rune, body rune, law rune, soul rune, blood rune, boots of stone, seed dipper, so I wanted to quickly go through the items that are optional, not required. Like, skill necklace isn't required, but it's very convenient that it brings you straight to the farming guild. The a potato cactus is used to protect the celestra sapling. The cooking gauntlets is so that you have a lower chance of burning the anglerfish that you fish. Then the 40 runes that I withdrew, mind rune, body rune, law rune, and soul rune are used to recharge the memoirs when you use it on an old memorial. Then tinderbox, you don't really need it because there's one at the location where you do the task, which is at Wintertop, which this game necklace brings you to, very convenient. And of course, stamina, high healing food, always useful. And then there's this Falador tablet that is used to bring me to an estate agent in Fally so that I can move my house to Hosidius. One of the diary tasks is to kill a lizard shaman, so if you don't want to manually dodge their poison spit attack, you might want to get tier 5 Shazian armor. So you could just stand there and be immune to its poison spit attack. It could still damage you with melee and its blue spawn though. So for those who don't know how to get Shazian armor that's used to fight lizard shamans so that they do less damage, you get it by fighting soldiers in the combat ring. Now you can teleport to the lookout and run up here to where the combat ring is. Or you can take the fairy code DJR and then run the distance. Now when you get here, there are different tiers of soldiers requiring different percentages of favor. Starting at 60% for tier 1, going up to 100% for tier 5. And then you just have to kill them with melee. Each soldier will drop one piece for their tier, challenge them again to get another piece. When you get the full five piece set for that tier, you can challenge the next tier soldier, and you repeat this until you get the full tier five set. Now tier five does require 100% shazing in favor, 
but at tier 5, the poison spit attack does no damage at all. So in my bank, I already have all the items I'll be needing. And in the first part of the run, there's going to be some combat involved where you have to kill a lizard shaman. So I'm going to withdraw all the equipable items first before my inventory. Then this tab is set up so that I just have to go down the list for the items I'll be needing. Oh, just a quick note, I'm starting on Lunar so I don't have to later switch when I do the Monster Examine task. So, the first part of the run actually starts in Falador, where you have to move your house to Hosidius, and then that part will come in later. So you talk to the estate agent, move your house, and choose Hosidius. Now, um, for the first part of the leg, you'll want to have your farming army equipped. So teleport to the farming guild, enter the farming guild to complete a task, go north, and then enter this area that's 85 farming, and then look for the leprechaun, because he's going to have my rake. With the rake, clear the patch. A very important note is the task is to enter the farming guild, and if the necklace brings you inside, you haven't completed the task. You have to go out and then go back in. Plant the sapling, pay it off. Don't forget to return your rake to the leprechaun. Now, this part, since now you have extra inventory, you could bring more food from here. I have an antidote plus plus. I'm going to sip it, and that's going to last until the combat portion. So, out of farmer guild, going southeast. You want to learn the fisherman spot until you get a trout. Salmons do not count because you're looking, got a trout. Now to go north, we're going to go north of the farming guild to where you have to chop the mahogany tree. Chop the mahogany tree, right click your... Make sure you have space. Right click your amulet to telly. When you see in your chat or gain XP, teleport to the farming guild. And then run south. Next is to kill a lizard shaman. So, drink a stamina pot. And it's gonna be a bit of a run. So the lizard shamans are in this dungeon, and gotta walk around here to get to it, and then they're located up here. Now if you can't kill a lizard shaman, there's normal ones up here that will finish a normal task as well. But killing the lizard shaman takes off two tasks. So enter the lizard dwelling, and then to the north is where the lizard shaman will be. Now they do a poison spit attack that hits in a 5x5 five five square, so you have to run. Okay, that... the spot is a single area. And you just have to move three steps away when he attacks. And run away from those spawns, because if they explode next to you, they'll do 9 damage each. Get one kill to finish the task. Now to get out, go exit the portal, go south. And then right here, jump in the strange hole. There's a prairie altar over here but I'm not going to be needing it. Now heading east, we're going to board a special boat. 
that's gonna bring us t to our next task. So we're gonna board Bodhi. Don't need to fly fishing around or that. Unequip both your weapon and your gloves. Get a bird. And then catch the fishing spot. And bluegill. Alright, so next, um, Zarek Talisman to the Glade. Run south, thief from the stall, and then go south to kill a sand crab. And then be ready to teleport outside your house for the next step. Get ready to teleport outside your house when it dies. If you have a pool, drink from it, and then get back out. We're gonna take a shortcut across the river. Now, if you don't have I don't know if this has a agility requirement, but if you don't have it, you can teleport to the woodcutting deal. That's just further west. Now, dig some salt, which, if he's not in this spot, just look for this NPC. Uh, save a little time, teleport to the woodcutting guild. Enter the woodcutting guild as a task, and then, if you have 90 woodcut, go further west to chop the redwood. In hindsight, it would have been faster to Zerak Talisman to the lookout, enter the Woodcutting Guild through the western entrance, and then there, you're right in front of the Redwood Tree. Climb up the rope, chop the tree. And then get ready to teleport to the fishing. Second option. Enter the manhole down here. Going west, we need to open a shop, and then when we trade, once we see the shop, we teleport back to the surface with the same teleport. And then going east, we're going to steal an artifact for this guy. But we have to first get a task. Task option won't show until you actually done it once. Looking for any help, second option. First option, I have what it takes. So he says Western House. So the area is here. Anything not on land is the residential area. So northwest, west, southwest house, south, southeast, and north. So he said west, so I need to go to this house and steal something. Up the ladder. Pick lock the drawers, and then be aware of where the patrol men and women are. So for this one, I'm going to be going north. So I'm going to go when he goes back to the east. I'm going to turn my camera so I can actually see this area. And then when this person cross passes me, I'm gonna go north. And then that's it. Once you're out, you just have to return it to him. Now, I'm gonna go further east to catch the angler. And then I'm gonna head back to return the pendant to him. And then here, there's a bank if you need to get more supplies, but there's also a bank in the late next area, too. 
Now, gotta catch an angler, which requires fishing rod, sandworm. Okay, got it. Then you have to cook it. So, cooking outlets, there's a stove nearby. I actually don't know what the burn rate is, but I really hope this doesn't burn. And that's a late diary complete. So now going further east, I'm gonna go return or turn in this stolen pendant. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna teleport back to the center of and then head south. So next step is to fix the broken crane. So, I mean, Okay, well, this is weird. So normally, what you would do is not be this guy and be repairing the one he, the NPC is fixing, but since he's right here, I'm gonna... Wow. Well, I just missed it by a tick. So the wiki says that the higher tier nail you have, the lower chance you will accidentally bend a nail. So if you could afford to bring higher tier nails, that would be recommended. Okay, finally. Now, next we're gonna head to Land's End. Gonna travel and choose the option to teleport to Land's End, sail to Land's End, and then go north. Now, north of here, there's gonna be a bank I have no idea where I got that banana from. Don't need this. And there's gonna be a lot of running. So, bring an extra stamina just in case. Normal energy pop because it's gonna be a stupid amount of running. And bring runes to monster examine while being on the lunar spell book. And then bring also the Solarins. Going north of here is where the old memorial is. And this is where you would recharge it if you're low on charges. This isn't a task, but since it's kind of on the way, may as well recharge it. Now you don't need all these runes, you just need one of each of these for one charge. So depending on how many you've used. Now going further northwest, we're going to be hunting chanplas. next part is kind of more for people who haven't done raids because if you haven't done raids then you probably can't teleport straight to raids so then you have to make this stupidly long run all the way through here to get to the mountain trolls down here to monster examine now if you've done raids and you can teleport straight to Chambers of Zarek, then you just have to run a little south and then they're here. But for the sake of the guide, I'm going to have to run through all of this. And then there's some lizard shamans, aggressive ones, but this is where the normal energy pot comes in. K 
cast monster examine on the mountain troll. Zarek talisman to the heart, this will complete a hard task. Then head up the castle to the west. Then you need to lose some prayer points because you need to pray at the altar. So once you've lost some prayer points, you could actually pray at it. Then teleport to the lookout. Going north. So next is to heal the wounded warriors. And then there's some combat portion coming up where you have to kill a zombie in a dungeon nearby. So take one from crate and use it on the soldier. Now if somebody's also doing this for favor, you might have to hop worlds to find the soldier that's wounded. But here I don't have to. Then going southwest, there is a dungeon over here that you have to kill a zombie in. Now at the entrance, there is a mage that's standing right here, and then a ranger that's here that's the zombie ranger that you want to kill. But they actually hit pretty high, so you might have to kill the mage first and then kill the ranger separately. Since I'm in no gear, that's probably what I have to do. There's the mage. If it attacks me, I need to kill it. Okay. So I'm gonna first kill the mage. They're fairly low HP. The one down here is definitely range. And then teleport Inferno when you're done. I'm just staying to make sure I get the diary done. And that's the first half of the run. So I'm gonna be heading to a bank to the west, and then I'm gonna bank everything I'm wearing while keeping the talisman. So that's the first part of the run. Now I'm gonna deposit everything going left off at the pickaxe right here. Start, starting here. Get one of everything. Don't need that. This I will need. Gabe's necklace is for winter tot. Some energy to run. Teleport to house is always good. Alright. So mine a loaf of uh mine some lova kite. Go north. And then we're gonna have to mine sulfur. To mine sulfur, you need to be wearing a face mask as well as having a pickaxe. Now, a Slayer Helm does work as well because it has a face mask in it. Next is the Smith Addy, Smith Addy Bar in this furnace. Now, there's a Battlefront teleport that brings you here, which is slightly faster, but for me, I'm just gonna run it. It's only a little quicker. Also remember to bring your memoir so you can teleport straight back to Lova Kenj. I forgot to do it in the run, so remember to bring your memoirs. While you're at the bank, make sure you get a Dramon staff. Now, I don't have it in my inventory because I've completed the Lumbridge Elite Diary, so I could just still use Fairy Rings without a Dramon staff. But you're gonna need to be able to use Fairy Rings uh, in the later part. So once you're inside the Forsaken Tower, you smelt your Addy Bar in the furnace. If you remember to bring your memoirs, teleport to Lovel Kenj, go east to the pub, and make your strength potion while inside. Now I forgot it, so I need to go to the Inferno with my Zarek Talisman and then run southeast a bit till I get to the pub.
and then make sure you complete it and don't cancel yourself. Next one is going to be grab a book or turn in a book at the library. Select to help one of the NPCs on the bottom floor and they'll give you a book to look for. Now the book doesn't typically match the item names, so consult the wiki on which exactly they're asking for, which is also going to be linked in the description. Going up to the top floor, I'm looking for the NPC Biblia, who will be able to give me a hint on where the book I'm looking for is located. Alright, so, ask this NPC, top floor, southwestern bay. He'll give you a hint of where the book is. And then this part is kind of a pain because you gotta go through every single bookcase till you find it. When you do find it, just go back downstairs, talk to the NPC that you helped, and you'll get a tome of experience in return, which typically I'm going to use for runecrafting. If you have a dark essence block in your bank for whatever reason already, you could just go here and make it. Make the apotolotelli, but since for the guide there is a ready task further north near the area, I'm just going to also show for the people who don't have one how to get it. Now, I really like using this fairy, but to unlock it, you need to pay this guy 80k. So for people who haven't, you could unlock it. You would have to talk to him with 80k. Next on the task list is switching spellbook with Tiss. I think his name is Tiss. Yeah, Tiss. And you have to stay on the spellbook because you need to be on the spellbook to make the Apatala Tally anyway. So going further north, there's going to be an agility icon. And then that's what we're going to use to get into the Essence Mine. So, we're going to need a pickaxe, chisel. And then... Mind some essence. You're gonna need two. Well, one for the Apatalatelli and then one for the Blood Rune. For the Blood Rune, you're gonna use a chisel on the essence once it's used on the altar. Use your essence on the altar. Now, with that, you can use chisel. With that, you can use a chisel to get dark essence fragments. That's only if you're doing the 77 rune crafting for blood altar, for blood runes. For blood rune, you take the south path to get to the blood altar. If not, you can just head back and do the Apatel Tele. Thank you. 
them and craft Legrun with the altar. So in hindsight, for doing the Apatal Tele, it's actually faster to just teleport to Akruis with your memoirs, because it brings you just kind of south of the house, but I kind of forgot that teleport existed. And then going further south, I'm going to go to make the Apatal Tele, which is in this house. Study on the lectern. Now I'll tell you back to whatever fairy ring is closest to you. For me, I have one in my house. So configure and I'm gonna go to CIR. And then head up the mountain. Now I'm gonna head west because that's where the iron ore is. Most people would take this shortcut, but that's only for getting up the mountain. On the easy task, you need to mine iron ore that's located west. And in the next part, there's going to be a little combat where you have to fight a worm and a hydra. Now, it could be a normal hydra. It doesn't have to be the alchemical hydra. Got the iron ore, says I've completed the easy. And then make sure you have boots of stone, which can be purchased from any Slayer Master. If you don't have one, there's a Slayer Master further south. Now I'm gonna go kill the worm first, which is to the west. Uh, it's pretty simple, you just pray magic. All you have to do is pray magic and stand one step away and range it. Next is to kill the Hydra. Now the Hydra alternates between attacks. Every three attacks it'll change attack styles and they look visually different as well as sounding a little different. They also have a poison spit attack which they'll spit at the floor so you just have to move away from it. So to start off it's attacking with mage. The left side is mage and the right side is range and it alternates every three attacks and then that's a range attack. So that's one two and then three switch attacks switch prayers and then this goes on for the entire fight now if you don't want to pay attention to the attacks you could just bring dehyde and pray from range and then just tank the mage hits that's poison spit just need to move away i think it's supposed to do one more now I've already finished this task because I've killed an a Hydra, so this is the end of the run for things you could do in a consecutive order. Now everything else is kind of one-offs where like you need to subdue Wintertot. So for Wintertot you'll need a dragon axe, game's necklace to get there, and some food. You don't need that much. And you'll also need four warm items. Now the warm items can be found on the wiki where you only need four items total. It could be any combinations, but there's different head slots that you can find on the wiki. But for me, I have the chicken outfit, which will work fine. So heading to Winter Dot. You then want to find the Winter Top World. So once you're in the Winter Top World, 
you can go in and you want to first grab a knife and then a tinder box and then head over to one of the braziers. I like going to this one. And then when this hits zero, you can click on it to light and that will give you 25 points and fire mechanics speed. Then you go south, chop some root, but make sure you enter this corner. Because in this corner, there is going to be a 3x3 three three attack, but that attack cannot spawn in this area because of this crate. Now occasionally you'll get damage, so this is the 3x3. Three three. It's going to hit all these guys because they're not standing in this spot where it can't spawn. Now occasionally you'll get damaged by the cold, but since I have the four outfit pieces, it's less damage. It does a lot more if you don't have anything on. Now I'm just waiting for myself to get a full inventory, then I'm going to start fletching. And then while you're woodcutting, you can't get interrupted by the cold, but fletching and burning stuff into the fire that can be interrupted by the cold, so be on the lookout in your chat box for that message. So chopping them into kindling and then turning it in gets you more points. And since we're just going for 1kc for the diary task, I'm opting to turn them into kindling first. This will be a lot better. Um, in the winter dot world, usually, unless you're paying full attention, I find it kind of hard to get enough points if I'm just burning the log instead of turning it into kindling. Once you've turned them all into kindling, you could start turning them into the fire. You'll get fire making XP. Now, this brazier can be unlit sometime. It might go out sometime. So you could light it again to get fire making XP as well as 25 points. Now your points show over here and Okay, I missed that. Uh, your points show here, and you only need 500 points to get credit for subduing Wintertop. And I just need to chuck a few more in, four more to go to get 500. And then you'll see the text color change. And then when you have 500, if you wish, you could just AFK here in the initial area. Here you won't get hit by the cold, so it's a kind of safe area. But if you still want fire making XP, you could go chop more roots and then turn more in, but really you just need 500 for the KC. And then whichever you want to do, you just make sure you stay here until the end of the kill, because if you go out, you, if you go out the door, you lose all your progress. And then once the game ends, you'll get a supply crate if you contributed enough, which is 500 points. And with 500 points, you get credit for subduing Winter Tot. Go into a bank, which withdraw the memoirs, and then teleport to places you haven't done yet. Curious, which, if you haven't done any before, should just be everything but piss. Good Whatever. I have no idea what it's called. So next is home teleports to the Tive farming minigame, but haven't done that yet, so teleport to the glade. You need a seed dibber and I'm pretty sure all you don't even have to talk to the guy, you just need to take seeds right away. It's a short run to the north. We're gonna see his house soon. Open the door. Grab some seats from the table. Third option. And then enter. He's gonna say, hey, do you know what you're doing? Yes, I know. All you have to do is plant it. Any of the patches. And then that's done. Finish all hard. And then intelligence report, you have to you have to go to the lookout, and then you have to find what time they spawn. There will be a little hint, 
And then you can go on the wiki, look up that hint to where it's going to be, and then just be there at the time. You must first talk to the captain before you can check when and where to get the intelligence from. Ask so if you can help. He'll tell you, oh hey, check the meeting. Now, these times are specific to the world, so you can, you can hop worlds until you find one that's not too far away. I'll have a link to the wiki in the description because the hint it gives you means this specific location and on the wiki it will show you where that place is as well as where to expect the spawn to be. Now you only have to kill the gang boss to get the intelligence and you might get hit with range but honestly if you just bring a little food it shouldn't be a very hard fight. And then when you get it you just have to return to the lookout, go north, Go back to the captain, turn in the intelligence, and your task is complete. For Squatizel, you'll need a completed totem, and that composes of three pieces, and each piece is dropped by any monster inside the catacombs, and it's always dropped by superior slayer monsters in the catacombs. So, doing slayer tasks inside the catacombs is a pretty good way to get pieces if you don't have it. So using your totem on the altar brings you to where the actual boss fight will be, but you should know that if you tally out during the boss fight, you can't get back without another totem. So be sure to actually be ready to kill the boss. And also, since the boss is instance, any items you lose on death, you cannot get back in. So for the first part of the fight, it's kind of straightforward. Uh, Squatizo uses melee and mage. You could choose to either have high melee defense and pray magic, or high mage defense and pray melee, which is what the wiki suggests. Now, I don't do that here in the video because it kind of doesn't matter since the fight isn't really that hard for me, but just uh, probably do what the wiki suggests. So you want to make sure you have super combat, and you definitely want to make sure you have a stamina, because in the second half of the fight there's going to be a bit of running. So at half HP, the altar on each wall can be activated by Scotizo, and for each altar that's activated by him, his defense goes up. And when three or more, or even two, it gets a little unreasonable how hard it is to hit. So at that point, you just go to each altar, hit it, um, each altar has 100 HP, but if you have an arc light, arc light one shots them every single time. On the top left, this shows which altars are activated. It's a bit covered up by rune lights upon an information display, but you want to aim for 0 to 1 altars activated. If there are two or more, you should probably be running to each wall to destroy them by, well, killing them. When you're running to each altar, you also want to be praying magic against Gotizel's magic attack. Scotizo also summons three minions that try to melee you, but really that's the rest of the fight. You keep killing the altars until there's either zero or one. If there's two or more altars up, knock them down and then attack Scotizo. And then when Scotizo finally runs out of HP, you win the fight. Then lastly, you need to get one Chambers of Zara KC. Now, if you've gotten one before, this update actually hit. Uh, it would have automatically update along with Winter Tot and Scotizo. Now, Chambers of Zarek itself is a very complex piece of content that I cannot show in just one video, or not not along in this video. So I'll link Wooks's Chambers of Zarek solo guide, which is how I learned how to do chambers. Typically, new players probably wouldn't be going solo they'd probably go on a team, so if you have a more appropriate guide, feel free to link it in the comments and I'll update my description to include it. So once your tree has finally grown, use a knife, make a battle staff, alright. So to claim your reward, you can teleport with the Zarek Talisman to the heart, and then go southeast to where Elise is. So starting on tier 1, you get 3 teleports per day to this area, which is here on the map. While wearing the blessing, you also gain a chance of fishing 2 fishes at once. Now the biggest note is, you definitely have to be wearing the blessing to gain this effect. The 
chance goes up per tier. At tier 1, you get 2% chance, but it goes up to 8% with the Elite Diary. And you'll get a message in the chat whenever it successfully procs. And just to show, the double fishing works elsewhere in the world as well. At tier 1, your entrance fee to Crab Call Isle is also cut in half, so normally it's 10k, but with tier 1, it goes down to 5k. For completing the easy task, you get a XP lamp for 2.5k XP and a skill that is at least level 30. It's whatever you want. Then also your Zarek Talisman drop rate is doubled, where normally it's 1 in 250 without, where afterwards it's 1 in 125, and this is the same no matter which tier of the blessing you have. Now heading back to Elise, with tier 2 your double fishing chance increases to 4%, and entry fee to Crab Call Isle is now free. Starting on tier 2 blessing, you have a 5% chance to mine 2 dense essence blocks, and you will get a message in the chat when it does proc, but this chance doesn't increase with higher tier blessings, so tier 2 already has as good as it gets. Also to note, you don't have to be wearing the blessing for this to work. And you get 20 free dynamite from Therius. Now, Therius is... If you go to the Inferno and just go a little to the northeast, he'll be in this house. And then you can just claim it from him. And then he gets free dynamite. And for this tier, you get an XP lamp worth 7.5k in a skill at least level 40. And then once you finish the hard task, your double fishing chance goes up to 6% from 4. And starting on this tier, you get the teleport that brings you to the Slayer dungeon that has a Hydra. Now you're able to use a Slayer helmet in place of a Shazian helmet. Now, you have to talk to the person to enable this, though. Okay, so after you have the hard diary complete, you can talk to an NPC in this cave to have your Slayer helm count as a Shazian helmet. So... Getting there is kind of a bit of a run. I can't remember which teleport this is, so I'm just gonna run from the Fairy Rain DJR to this boat that will bring me to this here. From the boat down here till you get to the dungeon. Then, when you get to the dungeon, talking to the captain, choosing the last option, will enable you to use a Slayer Helm instead of a Shazian Helm. Really useful for Lizard Shaman tasks. Also on this tier, you get increased yield from the Hosidius and Farming Guild patch. And your free dynamite goes up to 40 from 20. And the XP lamp is 15k XP in the skill of your choice, that is at least level 50. And the mountain teleporter would bring you here. Which is pretty close to the Konar Slayer Master. And then to the northeast would be where the mink is. Now when you, you finish all your elite tasks, you get a 50k XP lamp for a skill that's at least level 70. Your chance of double fishing goes up to 8%, and you get unlimited teleports to the mountain where Konar is, as well as the Corin Woodland. Burn 10% less in the Hosidia City Kitchen. Konar will now give 20 Slayer points instead of 18, and you'll make 10% more Blood Runes, which the extra doesn't give XP. So it's the normal XP rate, but you just get more Blood Runes. You also don't need the Boots of Stone or its other variants in the Slayer Dungeon. The Furious guy will now give 80 dynamite per day. To get there, just Inferno Telly, and he's right here. There's a right click claim option, and that's 80. Ah, 18k. So, XP lamp for 
skill of choice, at least level 70, you get 50k XP. And that's all the Campbell's Diaries completed in under an hour. I want to say you could probably do it under 50 because when I did the dry runs of this, it took about 35 minutes without counting chambers, winter dots, scotizo, or intelligence. So if you actually had to do those, well, not counting chambers, like winter dots only six minutes, scotizo, intelligence, you could probably easily do under 10, uh, depending on how long it takes to scout for intelligence. So there's actually a lot of stuff I would like feedback on because I don't even know if this video is helpful because the target audience is, I, I I want to say it's very niche because it's mostly people who have all the requirements for hard or elite but haven't done any of the diaries. I was also thinking about doing uh, this type of video where it's all the diaries for a specific region and I wanted to do it for other regions but I don't have an account that has the requirements that also hasn't done the task. I was really hoping the tournament worlds would be the answer to this, but in the tournament world, the diaries are all complete. And when you log out, everything is reset. So you can't do any trees. You can't be on long enough to check the trees. So you can't be on long enough to actually get the rewards. That kind of sucked. And then I'd like to know if there's anything you liked about this format. Like I was trying to do a few new things in this video where I was showing in game exactly what items you were going to need and the exact quantities in the bank. I also showed rewards instead of just simply reciting them from Elise. Uh, like I showed getting double fishing, double essence, and the chat message you get when it procs. I tried to do most of the actual run in real time, but I did have to cut some parts when the task itself would actually take five minutes to repair the crane. Um, or when I made a mistake uh, where I forgot my memoirs and I couldn't teleport back to Lovakenj. But please let me know and thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.